de Global Latin Factor Podcast. Welcome, welcome, you know, to another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast where we talk about Latino everything. And today we have a very special treat because we have an artist, MC, comic series collector, CEO of La Máquina, the Machine Group Empire, Young Mexico, artist of the people. It's Garz, GT Garz in the house. What's up, man? Man. We have an audience today, too. We have an audience today, too. And he got the comic book collector. Yeah, that was a lot. I told you, bro. Yo, what's up, man? I told you you could quiz me about you. I got you, bro. What? Are you ready? So we're going to start off with a segment I like to call Preguntas al Chile. Preguntas al Chile. Preguntas right al Chile. Subscribe to YouTube if you want to see them. Ready? It's going to be tough, bro. Tacos or tortas? Tacos. Whoa. Uh-oh. I answered that too fast. Let's go with tacos. Tacos. Okay. Corn tortilla, flour tortilla. Corn. Gordita sopes. Gordita, for sure. Mexican coca, jarritos. A jarrito. What flavor? I want to go with, um, what is it, lime? Yeah, yeah, lime. Let's go with that Limon. one. Limon. Agua de horchata, jamaica, o tamarindo. Tamarindo, for sure. All righty. What about salsa verde, salsa roja? We're going to go green. I know the next, uh, the question to the next one, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Menudo pozole. <laughs> Menudo, for sure. Absolutely. Churros of land. Oh, churro. Okay. I know you like, uh, some, I don't know if you like beer, but Dos X, Corona, Modelo, Victoria. I'm going to go with a Corona. All right. Tequila or mezcal? Tequila. Mm. Valent Valentina, tapatio cholula sauce. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. What'd you say? I don't even put those. I don't use those a you lot. You use those? Hey, Not really. Wrong with it. That's wrong with it. I'm I'm a green sauce on the taco. So you like that that natural natural? E yeah. Nah, that's good. Nothing wrong with that. We'll skip that one. Paletas, you know the little candy pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sandia, elote, or mango. Ooh, elote. Okay. And the conchitas, you like the brown ones, the pink ones, or the white ones? The what? The conchitas, the white ones, the pink ones, or the brown ones? I'm going white. All righty. All right. So about when you hear the word Latino, what mm -hmm. comes to mind when you hear the word Latino? Um, Worldwide. I think we're everywhere. Whether you're Mexicano, you know, Peruvian, you know, um, from, you know, uh, Honduran, uh, Salvadorian. Yep. Or just all over the place. True that. And do you consider yourself Latino? We identify. Do you care if anybody calls you Latino? Mexicano, Latino. I mean, I know uh, Mexicano is a, a certain area that we're, you know, yep. originated from. And mm -hmm. Latino gives a, a more broader uh area of all of us together. Yeah, true that. So I think it's just a way that people identify the Latin community. True that, true that. Appreciate that. Okay, so Senor Garza. So pretty much a lot of the interviews already cover the fact of how you got started, right? You started pretty much seeing your homeboys rapping in the back of the bus. You really liked it. You walk home plenty of times kind of practicing, but how many years did you walk home practicing before you were able to actually get up and, and went into your first, like jump in and wanted to get in there? Man, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. At least a good two years. Two years. Just walking home from school to the bus, back and forth, making sure that it was something I really wanted to do, but also at the same time, making sure that I wasn't tripping and that like I was just thinking I was good and I really wasn't. Really? I, because I probably wasn't. But at the time from, I guess, now to back then, you know, I had to start somewhere. And um, I just developed a small little style that, you know, I watched from taking little pieces here and there from people that I listened to, yeah. you know, my friends that I was around. And it became something that I just knew I wanted to do. Yeah. So two years that you like 
like, do you remember any of this stuff? Yeah. You were like, well, you were like speaking out loud or was it all in your mind? Both. Both, both, both. Because when you're walking home, nobody can. Re- you look crazy, probably. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. On? But like nobody's like really watching. Yeah, you, you know yeah. what I mean. So you're just you know walking, and, and then when you, I wasn't on like a major street. I was in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So you know you're in like you're surrounded by houses. You know you're just walking down the street. So for me, you know me doing it out loud or in my head, I would do it more so in my head when I was actually at a competition. Right. Or when I was, you know, about to freestyle in front of a bunch of people. You know, that's when I would do it in my head. And when I would say it out loud is when I was by myself, either in my room, walking home, yeah. or, you know, just at the house and nobody was around. Nice. And it just slowly started growing. So do you remember, because I remember you saying the time when there was a guy, there was some kind of event they always had, and you always go, but you never actually got on stage. Do you remember the day when you just decided, you know what, let me let me get it, let me jump Yeah, on. man. So the place was called the YA. The mm-hmm. YA stand for Youth Advocates. Mm-hmm. And basically it was like a community center for kids to go, like an after school program. Right. And at this community center, they had, it was like a warehouse where you could go b-boy, Mm-hmm. You could be a mix. Nice. You could get your hair cut. <laughs> what? Yeah, you could. Uh, y- there was a DJ by the name of Joe B. He used to spin nothing but boom bap and freestyle beats. Right. Um, you could buy pizza. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like you could do all these things there. And every Thursday is when everybody would meet there after school about five, about five six to about nine p.m. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You could go there, hang out choose any one of the ones you wanted to do, but they were all going on at once. Nice. You know what I mean? And the DJ every night on a Thursday would open up the mic and, you know, he would start freestyle and he was like, do we have anybody in the house that wants to freestyle? And I would just sit there and sit there and sit there every Thursday and just, you know, be like, I want to go, I want to go. And then one day I just got up and I went up there and just freestyle. Were you nervous, scared or everything? Definitely. Then for sure. Because I didn't know the reaction of my peers. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what they were going to say or think. And I think at the time, um, I didn't know if I was any good or not. Mm -hmm. And so it became like my outlet to just be around my friends, but also people that like, you know, I enjoy being around that I really didn't know. And every Thursday I would go there and just freestyle with this guy named Joe B. (laughs) You know what I mean? And we would just kick freestyles, and then slowly but surely, it turned into people would come to this place and try to battle me. And then so you became the man that everybody's trying to take man, out. Man, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember a guy pulling up on his BMX bike and goes on a mic and was like, "Where's GT at?" And this is before they straight were, up, just like yeah, that. before they were calling me Garza or anything. Mm-hmm. And everybody, and since I was cool with everybody there, they were like, oh, and so everybody points at me and they're like, oh, he's calling you out. Just like in a B-boy battle, yeah, you yeah, go yeah. see B-boys and yeah. they go up to you and they call you out. And you're like, what are you going to do? You're not going to battle them, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it was just that time. And so, you know, we ended up battling. I beat them. Nice. And then everybody kind of gave me a lot more respect from that day. And it just made me more confident and want to do it. Yeah. So when DJ Kool-Aid decided to suggest to you to add the guard stuff, what, what was thinking to your mind as far as, like, wanting to, like, yeah, that sounds dope because it's going to represent more of my, my gente? Or was it, like, because you said you're not cool enough to come up with a name, but I know it meant something to add the, the last name. Yes. Like, so what It was it? definitely, at the moment, to be honest with you, it just separated me from another gt that was in my city yeah because they would always get us confused oh okay. he's a dj okay. you know what i mean and so you know I, when i was coming up rhyming you know people were like oh you know i heard you djing tonight i was like nah i don't dj you know what i mean and when kool-aid said it to me at the time i think he knew ahead of time that it was more relatable to the Mexicano and Latin culture mm-hmm. than it was for me to just call myself gt right i wasn't even thinking that far ahead and so I think he already knew it and just blessed me with that game to be like, hey, bro, do this because I promise you later it's going to help you. Yeah. And I never thought about it until, you know, man, I don't want to say until later on in my career. And then that's when it became more of, 
Well, you putting Garza behind your name, now you represent your family. Right. Now you represent a whole culture of people. Yeah. You know, what are you going to talk about? What are you going to be about? You know, what are you doing? You know, who are you saying it to? Like, what are you representing? Right. And so music became a lot more deeper than just freestyle. True. And so it became more of like, you know, power word and, you know, presenting it to the people and how are they going to receive it? And then once receiving it, when they see me out at the mall or in the street, how are they going to treat me? Yeah. So all these things kind of played in my head to be like, you know, if you go out and talk about these certain subjects or you connect with people, whether it be about hustling, you know, they're going through things in life or whatever, you're really using music to vent as an outlet to get, it's like therapy. Yeah, it is therapy. If I heard it recorded for you and, and Crystal popping, and it would be like therapy. Yeah, yeah and so you that. get your emotions out, but you're, you, you don't even realize that the emotions and things that you're going through, everybody goes through. Mm -hmm. You know, like everybody's, you know, parents went through certain things, you know, you right. went through certain things growing up and you're not the only person that has. So when you present it to the people on a beat right. and you're telling them your story and they can relate to it, that's how you connect with a fan yeah. or that's how you connect with the people. Yeah. Definitely. And so they start to like your music and then like you as a person because they understand you're human as well. Yeah. True to that. Okay. So when you won that, uh, competition and they got you to the Apollo, I believe it was Foot Locker and Adidas put it together. Yeah. You won a battle. It took you all the way to the Apollo. What was the feeling whenever you got there as far as like, like getting the news that you won and then knowing that you're going to go to another state to compete? How was that? It was crazy because the mall that it happened in was in the same hood that I grew up in. Mm. And it was the same mall that I used to go to growing up all the time. <laughs> and for me, it was... Probably the biggest moments of me being a kid growing up, being like, you know, 15, 16, and them saying, hey, man, you won this battle. We're going to give you, you know, a bunch of clothes. We're going to fly you and whoever else you want with you to New York. You guys are going to stay in Manhattan. Yeah. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to have the battle at the Apollo, which is in Harlem. And so for me, I had never been out to state. And so I knew my sister had never been out to state. <laughs> took your sister. I took my sister yeah. because I'm like, you know, if she, if I get to experience something, I want her to experience it with me. So I took her with me. You know, we went out there to New York. We battled. It was like the best of like um, six cities. You got second place, right? And I got second place. That's dope. And then I came back and missed my first day of school for my sophomore year of high school. Yeah, they had the blackouts at that time. Going yeah, man. Yeah. And so... You know, it was just a big thing for me just to, you know, go and experience something on that magnitude. Yeah. Which one felt better? The first battle you won when you won the rims that you changed to $1,000 or winning that competition and getting to go to the Apollo? Man, they both have a certain significance in my life because one of them gave me the confidence mm -hmm. to keep going. And the other one showed me that it was possible for me to make this really happen. Yeah. Like going to the Apollo made me feel like if if this can if rap music can take you out your neighborhood, your city, your state, yeah, and get you way out here, then bro, you can really do this. Yeah. And then the part where you got to help your mom. Yeah. You had to work two jobs and, you know, contribute to the house. I bet that was pretty significant as well. And I didn't even realize the magnitude of that at the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, looking back on it, you know, um, I've seen my mom go through a lot. Yeah. And I show, I'm sure we all have yeah. seen our mothers go through Absolutely. a lot. Absolutely. And at the time, I think it was me just being like, if I can go to, you know, buy some school clothes, yeah, it's going to help my mom. But, like, I get to buy the things that I, like, always wanted. Like, mm -hmm. whether it be Jordans or these things, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. helping her out. But I'm also being able to get the things I could never touch, never reach. You know what I mean? And so I really didn't realize later till it was like, yo, you're really helping your mom, like, yeah. a lot, bro. And I knew that, you know, if that little bit could just go that far, then I should keep going. True. That. So I just kept going. That's badass. What What does your mom feel and your pops feel about the whole thing now that where you were at as far as how you've been scaling up from the times you've been working on your music to now? 
before it was more of an obsession to them. Mm-hmm. They were like, man, you're crazy. <laughs> what are you doing? Because, you know, there were periods where it was good and there were periods where it was bad. Mm. And the periods where it was bad was the transitional phase of, okay, you're not going to be battling and trying to go to these freestyle competitions and win this money. You're going to try to, you know, convert into like being an artist and selling CDs and tapes yeah. and, you know, putting your music out. And at the time, I really wasn't selling a lot of CDs. I really wasn't putting out, you know, music where it was like, oh, let me buy it, let me buy it. It was like more of an asking, hey, do you want to listen to my music? Hey, yeah. do you want to buy my tape? Da, da, da. So it wasn't like money was just flowing in from that situation. So there was a time when I was just doing it, trying to make a name for myself. And I was doing some things, but as an income, it wasn't coming in. Mm-hmm. And so for them, it became more of a like, bro, do you you really know what you're doing or are mm-hmm. you out here tripping? Mm-hmm. And I was like, nah, man, I'm not tripping. Like, I know this is going to work. And after a while, when it started really working and things started paying off, they could see what I saw. Right. And then they gave me a little bit more respect on, I see why you're doing this. I understand why you're doing this. And if this is what you want to do, Go hard until you just can't do it anymore. That's what's up. That's dope. Okay, I want to touch up on something that you had talked about. And if you don't want to talk about it, it's cool. But I think it's important for maybe somebody else can hear it and maybe, like, have a change or or be better educated and not take those decisions. So you had left to Laredo because you were actually got rated, if I'm not mistaken. You had talked about it on one of your, on your interviews. Is that something that happened that you might have could have avoided, or there was something that you learned about that experience? Because you even dropped the the machine name yeah. to t- change it to uh, La Máquina. Is there anything that anybody can take away to learn from what happened? And because it was dramatic, I mean, you almost dropped music and moved to another place. You yeah, know man, I mean? it was it was one of those times where I really felt like God stepped in and was like. You want something so bad, but you're going about it the wrong way mm-hmm. that I'm going to show you what you want that bad going about it the wrong way is not the way to do it. And I'm going to take it all away from you. Mm-hmm. And if you really want to do it, then you need to do it the right way. And I think that was just his way of showing me, like, number one, this isn't how you should be doing it. Mm-hmm. Two... If you go any further this way, it's going to be a lot worse for you down the road. So let me stop you now, because if you were to make it in this way, it's probably going to be a lot worse than what it is right now. Okay. So without going into details, because I get, I know you're very private. You might not want to talk about it. Might have been in the illegal type of spectrum. And <laughs> you say, like, you know what? This is not going to happen that way. There's only a few ways to really come up in, in music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dope there's money. The, 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 yeah, there's dope money and, you know, rap money. Yeah. And for us, we thought, you know, the dope money or, you know, the hustling spectrum was the way to go. Yeah, but it's short lived after a while, you know, because you're always paranoid about different things. I don't, in my eyes, that's just a a, a race against time. Yeah. And a lot of us, are gonna fall short on that time. You know, nothing lasts forever. And you might think it's gonna last forever, or you might think like, man, I'm on a roll, like I'm good, this is gonna, you know, like nothing can stop me. Yeah. Until that train stops. Yeah. And I think after after seeing it from now going backwards, I think for you it was like a great blessing, right? Even though it was a scary time. It was definitely a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Um, it was something I wish would have never happened. And, you know, at the same time, I kind of feel like I wouldn't be in this position I am today if that didn't happen. Yeah. You know, so even the decision to start, you know, getting into, you know, the mix with different people and doing different things, if I wouldn't have done that, it might not have put me in this position. Right. You know what I mean? So it is a blessing in disguise because it taught me a lot. It taught me how to hustle different. It taught me... You don't ever do that again. <laughs> you know what Most I mean? definitely. And, you know, it just, it made me realize that, you know, if you really want something, 
then you got to go about it the right way. Right. All right. Let's get into the project. Um, so you're here. You're doing a press run for your new EP that you just dropped. It's called The Man Who Fell From Earth that dropped July 29th. Yeah. By, with Le uh, Lion Legacy Records. It's an eight-track EP. And there's right now one visual. And as you were telling me, there's going to be another one coming up here shortly. So tell me about the artwork. Because I know you're into comics, series comics, even some of the, the projects you're done, you make it into series, which kind of lines up with collecting comics in mm -hmm. series because you're done like Brown by Honor 1, 2, and, and 3 and different things like that. So why why did you go with that type of, of uh, well, cover? Great. I've never even told anybody this. I, maybe money just knows, but I already have the artwork for part 2, 3, and 4. You already have it? I already got it. I'll show it to you. As soon as we get off yeah, the air, yeah, I'll show sure, it to you. For sure, for um, sure. The title, The Man Who Fell to Earth, was actually something that I fell into just thinking about names and finding out that it was a movie, a book. Um, they got a new version out right now. They have a series. They have yeah, a TV series. They have a TV series. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize it at the time um, because I come from representing La Machina. And mm -hmm. so I saw it as like kind of like an anime Spectrum was like, um, uh, excuse me, the the series Gundam Wing. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah, if you know yeah, about that, yeah, but yeah. they're like, you know, people that are in these machines and they're in space. They, you know, they're doing all yeah. this crazy stuff. It's, it's an anime. And so I took it into a, a few different, like, ways to look at it. Yeah. And being La Machina, like, in my mind, I thought, like, you know, okay, the man who fell to Earth, if I was in you know, an anime or if I was really in a machine and I fell to earth, what are the first things I would see? What are the first things that I would experience? So is that the Houston skyline that's on the on, on the city? Uh, I believe the, so the 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 graphic artist who made it was, is Willow Hawk. He goes uh, by WH Creative right now. Mm -hmm. And me and him have done tons of art together. Like he's, he's a mastermind. Um, I don't know if he used the city of Houston per se, Use your birthday, if super yes. fans. If y'all super fans, y'all wouldn't yeah, know his birthday. He did use there. my birthday on the front uh, <laughs> because it was the numbers that I felt were gonna be like, you know, when you read on the armor of a machine, they kind of yeah. have like the numbers on the suit and things yeah. like that. And so, you know, you seeing the two machines on the cover and then me stepping over the city, it's kind of just a representation of coming out of like like La Machina. like something falling down. Yes, mm. and so you know. It was more of a way for me to say, you know, if it's something that I experienced on the first day I was here or a year after I was here, what would I say or talk about if I just came down and, you know, spoke or just, you know, came to the earth? Nice. And, you know, other ways that I look at it as well is, you know, um, it's a way for me to vent and experience things that I've gone through in my life. You know what I mean? There's a little venting sounding a little bit because there was a little bit sound, a little bit of frustration, like people were not giving you props or forgetting about you type of, because some of the lyrics talk about that. I'm like, mm. There's certain things that I've always wanted to say or express mm -hmm. that I felt that I needed to say, but I never really wanted to feel like a complaining rapper because I hate complaining rappers. Right, right. And that's something I never wanted to go through. But at the same time, I felt that I just had so much on my mind that I needed to get out. I had so many feelings that I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. And if I kept them balled up, they would probably just come out the wrong way in something else. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, frustrating, yeah. you know, and maybe get frustrated with my partners, maybe my family, and da, 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 taking emotions out on people instead of using music what I use it for. Mm -hmm. which is therapy. Yeah. And so this time around, I just felt it was like more of a way for me to just say what I really felt and how what I'm really going through. And it's like, bro, if this is how you feel, bro, you got to say it. You know, like, just say it. Was this the right timing for you to express that um, as far as wanting to say that and really put it out there as how you felt? Definitely. I feel that it was the best time now because... I think I've skipped over it many times. Mm -hmm. You know, we all go through, you know, periods in our life where we feel like, you know, certain things should be better or, you know, how come I wasn't dealt this card or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, you might not say anything at the time. You know, if somebody bumps into you 
and doesn't say, excuse me, you know, you might not say nothing that day, but if they do it again, you might turn around and be like, hey, bro. What's wrong with you? Yeah, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it was just one of those days, you know, one of those times in my life where I was like, you know, let it out, bro. You know what I mean? Because if you don't let it out and you don't express how you feel, you're going to carry this on your shoulder for the rest of your life yeah. and, and never have a chance to express it. And you know that's not healthy for you to keep bothering that it's stuff out. It's not, right? bro. It's not. Especially when you're, you know, doing music and you're just trying to vent. Nice. So now that you have the, uh, you have, to be honest, has the visual. So you're going to do just two videos? We're going to, so we plan on doing four. Uh -huh. We've already shot three. Mm -hmm. One, to be honest, has released. Yep. It's doing great numbers, by the way. It's looking Thank nice. You. Yeah. And then I'm going to release the intro, Formula One. Formula One. Tonight. Tonight. Yeah, it's probably out right now while we're talking. Mm -hmm. Let me check. Uh, it check it right dropped now. at 10.30. Nice. Go and ahead. the last one that I shot is called Shattered. Shatter. Yeah. And that's basically talking about life experiences and things that I've been through. Um, yep, it's out already. Came out? Yep, it's out. Yeah. And so that's basically just talking about life experiences and things that I've been through, you know, just from back then till now. So those three have already been shot. And then the last one we want to shoot is a song called The Sprint. The Sprint. I like The Sprint. The Sprint is it's yeah. a it's a cool record. It's got an up-tempo vibe to it. Um, and it's probably one of my favorite records off the album. I like Dollar Signs. I got The a Sprint. Dollar Sign. Yeah. yeah, man. That's a nice vibe to it, too. Definitely. And, then, uh, and that's going to be all the videos for this round. Yeah, we'll probably shoot four out of the eight. Yeah. Why do you not like to curse? Because is that because you feel so strong, <laughs> feel strong in the in the power of, of the spoken word? It was, it, you know what? You, you did cuss on this one, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've never really just felt like I needed to curse. Mm -hmm. I felt like, and even when I'm rapping really hard on certain, like if you really listen to the sprint, yeah, it's really aggressive. It's really up tempo. And you would think or feel that I cursed on that song. But if you really listen to it, the emotion gives you the same feel as if I were to be cursing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the same way that I could curse and make and have that umph impact, I try to do without cursing, but saying what I want to say so I don't need to curse. Right. Okay, so that's your picture right now. If y'all look at the cover, you have what? What are the two faces? The, the, is that the robot that you were yeah. talking about? Mm -hmm. So you got the him kind of landing, and then this is what he's saying as far as the EP and what you expect to. What about the sound? Who was the producers that you went with? Was it the? I think you said you had a homie that used to do the beats for you way back in the days. That he's still working with y'all. Yes, or no? I still work with Risco Funk mm -hmm. on this one. I have a, a producer that I met in LA maybe about two years ago. His name is Amnesia Beats. Mm. Me and him um, did some time in the H together, which dropped earlier this year, and that was a CD that I, I dedicated to the city of Houston and you know the sound and the culture that you know we come from. And me and him just have such a dope chemistry that you know we just didn't stop working after that CD. Nice. So he produced the majority of this one. Um, another producer, Marco V, he did the intro. Uh, Cinematic did um, Stress Free, and I want to say. That's I think that's it for this tape. I think I've only used three producers and and on this tape and Am Amnesia probably did the majority. Nice. All right. So what should the people go get this one right now? Besides being a fan of you, if they never heard of you, this is the first time they're hearing about it. Why should they like go get this right now and listen to it? Um, you know, just why? You're getting a a hungry GT Garza. Mm -hmm. You're getting a, a GT Garza that. You've probably been wanting to hear it for a long time because there was a time when music became really conscious for me. Mm -hmm. And I would try to watch what I would say. And I would try not to um, say certain things that might upset somebody else or do this or do that. And this time around, I don't really think I tried that. You didn't give up. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> no, not really, though, but, but in a dope way as far as rhyming and the way that, like, you you deserve that right to do so because like you are well spoken by different artists that are well established in Houston. Like you've been doing that. your thing. Now it's not me; it's them saying it because that's how they feel. What way back when you were a youngin to now, and and 
listening to the tracks, I'm like, yeah, he should feel this way because he's been working. Like, if they say 10,000 hours is mastery, you're past that and some. You know what Man, I mean? Man, and they do say that. Yeah. You it, know what it I mean? It is true, though. You have done more than 10,000. Yeah, You've been it, on it for a minute. A lot of hours. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So many hours, I think I forgot how many is in it. Beyond that. <laughs> Let me ask you this, though. So, again, go, go grab it right now. The Man Who Fell to Earth already dropped. They're all there available, all streaming platforms. There's another video right now. It's of the recording of the video it just dropped today as we were talking. Yeah. So go go check that out and uh, definitely be on the lookout. All right. Another question that I have for you is that has there ever been a, like a real good deal with a record label that it was really hard for you to like say no to, but you just for the better of you, you felt it wasn't something that you could sign and you decided to walk? Yes, there have been instances where I could assign to certain labels or certain people yeah. that just didn't feel right for me at the time. Right. Or even if it didn't feel right, I was too nervous and scared to sign it mm. because I didn't know what I was signing. I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't have a lawyer. You know, I'm just, you know, a kid off the street that was just rapping. Yeah, you hear the horror stories about people signing and all of a sudden they have no rights to nothing. All yeah, their music so, catalogs is gone. And so I didn't have any, you know, money to get a lawyer or figure all that stuff out. So a lot of the times I didn't know what I was dealing with or who I was dealing with, you know, to sign yeah. with. So I passed up on it. And um, over time, you know, I, it just became one of those things where I had to learn the business. Yeah. And learning the business is something you should do from the jump. Yeah. You should do that first. First. <laughs> While you're rapping, also, like, learn pieces of the business. Mm -hmm. So you know, you know, what you deserve. You learn, you know, what's in your right to keep. What you deserve, what you're worth. What you're worth, for yeah. sure. And you can understand, you know, when you get with a company or you get with a distribution or something, you know, what they're supposed to do for you. Mm -hmm. You know, what falls in your lap and then what falls in their lap. That way you don't have to sit there and be like, oh, well, this person or this label didn't do this for me or this company didn't do this. Maybe that's not the job. You know what I mean? So you just have to know, you know, the business and what you're in it for. Is that what you went with uh, Lion Legacy this time? Because this is the first project you dropped with them, right? This is actually, yeah. So I signed with Lion Legacy for a year for a contract for us to try to build off of what we could together. As far as distribution or what is it with? No, it's a it's a full blown record company uh, out of Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Lion Legacy. Um, we did a April to April deal, mm -hmm. and it's basically to see where we're both at, and if we really like each other. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And so the first tape uh, that I put out with them is the Man Who Fell to Earth. Nice. And then the next tape that I'll drop with them will be early next year. Um, you got a name for it? I might be the man. It might be part two. To yeah, because be I already got the artwork and and the whole series I got mapped out in my head. That's dope. Like I got it mapped out to the fourth one, and the fourth one is not even titled "The Man Who Fell to Earth." Just uh, you know, it's it, but everything goes with it. Um, so I might put that out next. Uh, I haven't really even thought that far ahead. Uh, me and Baby Bash are working on Player Made Mexicans oh, yeah, Four. You are. So that'll be the next tape that, you know, people will hear me on uh, with a bulk of music coming out. With a platinum artist. Man, Baby this guy here, man. So shout out to him for the blessing. Mm -hmm. And um, so after this run of The Man Who Fell to Earth, it, that's what I'll be pushing next. That's what's up. All right. So there's Rashi, Lucky Luciano, Baby Bash, King Lil G, j Dog, That Boy T, Charlie Boy. All of them speak super highly of you as far as not only you spitting and be able to like be lyrical, but also just being a super humble person. Where does that come from as far as you being humble? Does that start at home? Is that just something that you just, just, just the way you were brought up? Or how did that come to be? Because these are well-established people. And I'm pretty sure there's more that, that speak highly of you. But I know for sure that I've seen them say this on interviews. I, th I think it came from home first. Because, you know, my pops was in the Navy. And to a military brat. Yeah, he was really like, like if we would walk out the house mm -hmm. and our clothes was wrinkled, Oof. he'd be like, bro, go back in the house and iron your shirt. 
he wouldn't let us leave with him with wrinkled clothes. I feel that. You know what I mean? Like, we couldn't, he would be like, go back in the house. Like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because we were an extension of him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we represented him. And so, for me, I think that just became a thing of respect. Yeah. And so, when I came out, you know, to do music, at first I didn't realize, you know, what music was about because I just wanted to be the best. I just wanted to freestyle and rap, rap, rap. Then it became, you know, what I was rapping about, who I was rapping to, and, you know, representing my family, like I said, being, you know, a Garza. And I knew with that name, I was representing my father as well. Yeah. So I can't be out here on some knucklehead doing some crazy stuff, knowing, knowing once it didn't work for me. Yeah, that's true. And then two, you know, it just was a lot bigger to me. Yeah. What other, what other game did, uh, besides letting you know about the business, driving you on a Bentley, Slim Thug, what else did he put you on game as far as you, you need to like have all this time, you need to set up a shop here and always have merch or things like that. What else did he put you on game? Consistency. Consistency. Yeah, man. Watching him over the years from when I rode the school bus, putting out quality music, quality artwork, quality merchandise. Um, that's a consistency thing. And over time, if you can stay consistent and put out quality, people are always going to come back. Nice. So, you know, there's tons of things he taught me, but there's really main things that as a artist and a consumer, I look at both. Yeah. Because you always want to go back. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've been scaling up from the times you've been dropping your projects and even in your mind sometimes, instead of like you were talking about before, I can definitely drop an album, but if I don't have enough to go to the next quarter, because you even break it down to the quarters, is that I can drop EPs, mm -hmm. which especially with the attention span of people being so short now, and I can have multiple things that I can be consistent throughout the entire year. For sure. So that's dope. What was the hardest part that you have ran into or the most challenging part as far as the music business part? What was it? One was learning the business, for sure. That was probably the hardest thing to get a grasp on. Like When I you're said, referring to the business, what exactly are you meaning for people that don't understand? Basically, uh, when you put out a CD, how do you upload it? Mm -hmm. Where do you upload mm -hmm. it? You know, if you were to give it to a company, if they're taking 10, 20, 30 percent of your life, or your album, which is your life, mm -hmm. you know, what are they doing for you? You know what I mean? Um, how do you set up your publishing, your ASCAP, your BMI? Right. What does publishing even mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, how much of that do you really deserve when you're making and creating a song with other artists and other producers? Um, all of those things come together with learning the business. Right. And that's probably, it, it really wasn't the hardest challenge, but it was the 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 last challenge I think that I had to get with. All right. You got tour. We got places you're going to be at. Where are you going to be at? On the 26th, we're going to be in Odessa, Texas. September 15th, we're in Denver, Colorado. Nice. September 16th, we're in El Paso. September 17th, we're in Seattle. Nice. I'll go back home for a little bit. And then me and Bash are going to drop this Play Me Mexican 4 album. And then hopefully from there... I'll just jump back on the road and, and keep touring. La Máquina, what they got coming? So Cassette Coast, he just put out an album called V, I want to say about a month ago. Um, he'll be working on Beautiful Monsters, which is his first solo album under the company. Nice. Um, we also have Buns, B-U-N-Z. He has an album with a, our uh, homie Risco Funk, a producer that I grew up with. He nice. also has a solo and a duo album with uh, another artist that I highly respect named Fellow. Fella. Yeah. He, is he with you? Yeah, I do songs a lot, but I he's not with you. I grew up with Fellow for almost over, I don't know how many years. And he's just an artist that I respect and that I love rhyming with. Yeah. And people that I love rhyming with, man, I just I always connect with them on music. Yeah. And then you're here in Dallas. Uh, well, this is going to be pre-recorded, but you're going to be here on Sunday, right, performing? Yeah, actually. So I'll go host a club tonight, and then tomorrow we're in uh, Fort Worth with Three Six Mafia and Comedian there. Nice. What's the craziest story here in Dallas that you? Because you been here a long, many times. We ran into each other before we met a few times. But what was the craziest story that happened to you with fans, especially with the lady fans? Who? <sighs> uh, I gotta tell you all. <laughs> okay, we'll do that. All yeah. right. So. All your social media, one more time, where can they find you at, uh, like, website and everything? Man, uh, you can hit me up on Instagram at 
uh, it's Garza. I mean, it's GT Garza. That's I T Z G T G A R Z A. It's GT Garza. Hit us up on YouTube at youtube.com backslash Lamakina TV. You can hit me up on, you know, Apple Music, uh, Title, Spotify. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Just search GT Garza. Check out the, you know, the music, the albums. The new project, The Man Who Fell to Earth. They yes, already sir. dropped. It has two videos. Go blow it up. Go run up the numbers. And uh, GT Garza, bro. Um, oh, Genaro Tomas Garza. Man, this guy here name, is good, name bro. Named after his grand, grandfather. Money. He's good. <laughs> We're good at that. We're good at that. I passed the quiz with that. You better than that guy. <laughs> so, bro, check it out. So, I really feel like, and I was telling this guy that uh, you're being very consistent in everything, and I, I'm I'm glad that you're in a place now that you just don't really. I think it's the, probably your upper, like upbringing that you were polite and really didn't want to offend, but it's cool that you're now like you really have to say certain things you're gonna say, right? And the fact that you started from a garage to the back of the bus to two years walking and and trying to get there to all of a sudden now you're just uh, a CEO of a label, man. That's, that's amazing to me. I call it the Global Latin Factory because I like to showcase Latinos that are doing things globally. And without a doubt, GT Garza, you are a Global Latin Factory, sir. Man, thank Simo. you, bro. I appreciate the love. And uh, I'll, I'll be back soon, man. All right. And one last question before I let you go. If you were to be Google or search many years from now, what do you hope people to find? Ooh, that's an amazing question. Um, my art, what I left behind, my creativity. Uh, um, we only live for a short amount of time, and I hope what I said or what I've done is enough for people to be like, I wish I could have met that guy. Awesome. That's beautiful, brother. This was another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast. Remember, we are just like you. We are the spice in this melting pot. And it is the world. The next time. ¿Qué pasó, mi gente? What's going on? Thank you very much for checking out this episode of the Global Land Factor Podcast, where I hope that you are enjoying the content. If you are, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. Tell somebody and help us reach our goal of a thousand subscribers for this channel. Again, thank you very much. Go subscribe. We appreciate it. Like a pedo, but in fact, it's a flamingo coming to Havana and we from Puerto Rico on a pirate ship. He don't know where do we go. The birds of the jungle chasing fortune and fame, but Juan is flamingo is no woman.